All right, let's do this. Hey, everybody. Y'all know me. This is Josh Gale. Um, so you're probably wondering what you're about to watch right now. Um, this is called Skate Chronicles, and I was originally going to call it Skate Chronicles Part 1 for when I would do other stuff. We go at the skate park and capture what God's doing. But since, as I've been editing this, it's come out to be so long, I figured I might as well chop this up into three parts. So what you're watching right now is part one of Skate Chronicles. And basically what you're going to see in this part is me and some of my friends, Tally, Jay, Jason, Evan, and myself, hanging out at the Laurel Skate Park and um, just talking, just catching up, talking about things God's doing in our lives. And... Um, you're going to hear some pretty interesting stories, but I'll get into that later. Um, just wanted to remind you guys that during the duration of this film, you're going to hear and see a lot of things you probably haven't seen before. There's a lot of talk about things like deliverance from demons and evil spirits. People are getting, you're going to see in part three, someone getting encountered with the Holy Spirit. Um, maybe some, for some of you guys, this is like normal territory for you guys. And for the rest of you, you might just be like, oh, I've seen this here and there, but I don't really know what I feel, how I feel about it. And to some of you, this might be your first time seeing or hearing about any of this at all. So I just wanna encourage you to keep an open heart and an open mind. You don't necessarily have to believe everything these guys say or anything these guys say, but I would just encourage you to keep an open heart and you never know, you might learn something. God might even speak to you. So that's my hope. Watch this. Watch out for wheel bite, dude. Wheel bite? Yeah, that's something you don't have to worry about. What's that? Since these are softer wheels, it's gonna stick to your board more when you get wheel bite. You wheel bite is you where your be able wheel to turn it touches your board like that. Where's your speaker? You can turn. Just be, be your aware speaker. that if you turn in, huh? if you lean into it too you hard, it it's gonna bite. Yeah, these you are ain't going bump. Cruising, so. And they're bigger. They're bigger wheels. They're, yeah, you, those are for cruising. They're a little bit bigger, so they're gonna be closer to your board. Yeah. I see. Gotcha. You ain't gonna be able to turn that shark. Gotcha. I mean, it's so cool. Yeah. I'm about to smoke a fat ass dude, bro. Hey, little beast. Boy, you gonna get wrecked then. Bro, it just seemed like you're right, bro. I, I, I can uh, be all good to go with like, <laughs> by the time you're done. Okay. Just make sure you ain't gonna blame it for being smacked. Oh boy! You know what happens when the camera comes out? What? What? Jason don't land shit. People keep. Oh, for real? No, nah, what? Don't land shit. Here we go. You let. See him shaking it right now. That bro. last, that last reel you posted. Messing up on putting the wheel on now, bro. Ah. <laughs> shaking. That last reel you posted, like, you landed that. Right. Leave a hand up for you. Be local. <laughs> but that's your camera. Yeah, this is what I used to make the film. That's lit. I have to say, uh, EO5 or EOS. Yeah, M50. Mm -hmm. Alright, so how'd that feel? Testing this bad boy out. Getting this work. So what you guys are about to see is my friend Jay explaining to my friend Tally a really weird situation he's been in for a while now where there's this church he's been visiting where there's all kinds of signs and wonders, things like people getting prophetic words about their future, people getting healed, all kinds of miracles and great things happening. But it turns out the source of that power actually wasn't from God, it was actually from witchcraft. <laughs> Wild stuff. All I can say is check it out. Yo, he's deep, like, I'm talking about he will... If you go to his altar, something happening. Oh, Wait, sure. Wait, so is it kind of like God didn't tell her to just um, bring correction? 
No, 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 no. The correction was the destroyer. Uh, but he, six, like, sorry, sorry. He, <laughs> any conviction he <laughs> get, wow. like, he doesn't want to get, uh, <laughs> It's just, it's just crazy how darkness works. So, you know, we've been talking about it. We've been going through it. Um, she's finally coming to her realization about it. And this is this has been months of praying over this girl to get out. She couldn't see the deception. Cause like, you know, I came from. Uh, the occult and witchcraft, like, you know, I got a chat at all these type stuff. So when I came out of it, uh, you know, when, I, when I came out of it, you know, uh, I, could just, I could tell the difference what is the Holy Spirit and what is witchcraft. Some people don't believe in nothing. So when I was into, you know, all that stuff, I was dealing with people with power, but from the dark side. And when he started to do his sermons and stuff, I never gave uh, evidence to the Holy Spirit or, you know, the validation to Jesus. It was all through his spirit guides and stuff like that. It's so subtle. Always going, you know, I picked up on the spirit. I picked up on the spirit. But he would prophesy, and it was real though. He would see, like, say you walked in, you would know some stuff about your past. Yeah, like, it's real. It's real. False prophets is not people who get prophecies. And don't get me wrong. It's people that have that they have they get to prophesy, but the source of the power is not Jesus. The demonic is so real that even the Bible says that these false prophets will give you a right prophecy. Yeah, false. It's not. It's not like it's wrong. So like, you know, I would discern it because at the end of the day, I know, you know, both. When you don't, if you never experience the dark realm and the dark side, you won't, you can't know which one's from the Holy Spirit and which one's not. Right? No, 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 no. Say you only experience the Holy Spirit, a person only seeing one side of the coin, so... You know, a person could be hesitant to see, like, if that's really the Holy Spirit. But once you experience both, there's a clear difference. The way people conduct themselves, the way they say where it comes from, the nuances. It's just nuances that, like, if you've never seen it, you've never seen it. And that's why, like, when, when people say, like, you know, is it a charismatic church or something? If you've never experienced the dark side, you, you wouldn't really understand what a charismatic church is. Because Here's a good example of this. So you know how in, there's a verse in 1 John 4 that says, like, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits. Right. And here's how you know the spirit acknowledges Jesus Christ is God. Uh, so yeah, if they're saying that this is they're saying that the way the reason this is happening is because of Jesus, then that's how you know it's the real thing. And, but if they don't ever give credence to Jesus, which that guy never did, right? Also, there's this thing where like some people feel like if they have the Holy Spirit, they don't need to read the Bible, but the Holy Spirit literally brings utterances and verses. So like, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Say, say that again. So like sometimes people will say like, oh, the Holy Spirit's leading me, so I don't need to read the Bible. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh yeah, that's too. That doesn't make sense. It yeah, contradicts yeah. itself. No, oh, yeah. Sometimes like especially if you've been like probably for a long time, you can like, he'll bring verses to your mind so often, right, exactly. sometimes you'll think like, oh, I don't have to go read it. I've been, sometimes I have to watch myself with that, because like, in the different seasons of life, the way you get the word will look different. Sometimes, in some seasons, it might be studying for hours a day, in some seasons, it might just be like, I, I spend my time with God for like 30 minutes in the morning, but I like the sermons, you know, you know, we just got to meditate, that's the thing that I like to kind of work on yesterday, I'm just going to day and night, so it's not just like, because when I was young in the faith, I would go to a sermon being like, I don't have to read it now, like I already got it. Yeah, can't yeah, live with that. Follow, follow the spirit and also, yeah, like you said, meditate on the Lord. Like, the, the battle is being in constant awareness of it, and you can't be in constant awareness of it. I didn't know you did a deliverance on Evan, and that's how he came to Christ. What happened? I, I, like, he's gonna tell me more at the taco place, but yeah, I didn't know that. You didn't know what? That, like, him and Evan, he, like, he did a deliverance on Evan. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, in a few minutes, I guess. Yeah, I'm down to dip.
if whenever. Yeah. In a few minutes. Definitely. Wait, what time can I grab tacos? You just asked me. Um, we should go soon. Yeah, I'm Because I gotta be somewhere. Okay. Well, I got, I'm, I do like a vacation <laughs> thing. Okay. When do, when do you have to leave? I will be on the phone by 8. Right, we'll, we'll go in like 5 to Okay, I'm gonna start taking my stuff off. It doesn't always go like this, but sometimes I can just tell by the worship. How they're how they're doing their worship, I'm like, oh, okay. I feel you. Yeah. I feel that. When you come to God, you have to come with adoration first. You can't come to the press. You gotta be like... So with people's worship, especially like Ethiopian worship, it's so different. Because people are coming from a place of need. Whereas here, people like sometimes produce music and it's just like... It's like, yeah, exactly. What's the place called? Sanctuary. It's New Life Sanctuary. Where's that? Essex. Essex, Baltimore. Okay. What do you like about it? Yeah, tell me about it. Alright, so like, you know, I've been to, I like dabbling in some churches and stuff like that. I'll say the one thing I noticed about like praise and worship is like, whoever's hosting it, it goes on their genre of taste in music. Like, you, if you have like an African church, they went to like the Caribbean, like, oh, you go? he needs to come to a like, like they got yeah. that. And if you go to like a yeah. a, a, a black church, not African, a black yeah. church is more like the Kirk Franklin type of vibe. Yeah. And then if you go to like the, 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 the pastor is white, the pastor is white, so he has such a 70s, 80s praise music. Uh, and then the thing I noticed the most is this: the piano is the same for every church. <laughs> It's the Lord. It's, yeah, the, yeah, it's yeah. the red one. Yeah. I love it though. I love it though. But, uh, bro, the spirit. The spirit is definitely manifested. Yeah, those videos he posted, that was at that church. Last night, randomly started shouting and talking. Yeah, yeah. So I went. I went. Uh, so Tuesdays is deliverance and healing. 